I wish I would have known these things first before I started selling full time on eBay. Welcome to Flippin' and Punchin', and today we're gonna pull some eBay orders. We had a good weekend. Let me take that back. We had a crappy week last week, and then like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, our sales just kind of just took off. We did like a thousand dollars over the weekend on eBay, and then we did like five or six hundred on Macari. So it was able to. Oh my god, it's already begun. It's already begun. Hey, you thirsty? I can't make it through the intro before it begins, but <sighs> Mr. Jack, let me tell you. On the bright side, if you guys just saw my last video, at least he's drinking out of his own bowl today, all right? So anyway, where was I? Yeah, we um, we sold five or, uh, we had a bunch of sales on Macari, which sold like five or 600 bucks. So the weekend saved our week because it was really slow beginning of the week. Now, if our sales were up early in the week, it would have been a really good week, but Sometimes that's how it goes. And, and that brings me to the topic of today is we're going to talk about the things I wish I would have known before I became a full-time reseller, because there's a lot of things people didn't tell me. There's a lot of things I didn't realize. And hopefully this is going to help a lot of you guys that are maybe, you know, think about going full-time or kind of just give you a little insight of what it's actually like being a full-time reseller and the things that we go through and some of the struggles that we wish we didn't have if we would just would have had the knowledge not to have it. All right, so the first order we sold is actually we sold a couple video games. We sold two sealed games. You guys saw my video game pickup, which was epic on the Picking and Punching channel. If you haven't seen it, go watch that video. But we picked up a massive collection of video games and a bunch were sealed. And we just sold two of those. First one we sold is Mass Effect 3. This is brand new sealed. Surprisingly, this doesn't go for that much. We got $9.99 plus shipping for that. And then we also sold Skyrim. This is brand new sealed for the Xbox 360. Had that one listed for $24.99. Buyer sent me an offer for $20 bucks and I accepted. So I got $20 bucks plus shipping. We paid $40 for the Xbox 360 and probably like 30 games. So it was such a great deal. And we sold both these for $30. Bucks, so almost got our money back already on these. The, one of the biggest things about people going full-time or people think they have more time to put in eBay. Now, there is a direct correlation with the amount of time you put into it to the amount of output you get from it. But... Just because you work 20 hours a week part-time and we're making $2,000 a month doesn't mean that if you go full-time going 40 hours a week that you're going to make $4,000 a month. It doesn't automatically double. It doesn't correlate like that. Now, there's possibilities you can make more money. It's possible you can make less money than that. Because when you, do, when you go full-time, you're spending more time sourcing. You're spending more time networking. You're trying to spend as much time listing. But you have to remember when you're part-time and you're just doing it on the side, you're strictly focused on just the listing aspect and shipping. And there's a lot of other things that go into place. Just because you guys go full-time into reselling doesn't mean that you're going to automatically double your, your output. Remember that. Now, some people triple and quadruple it, but it doesn't always directly correlate. That's why I highly recommend if you guys ever do decide to go full-time, have three to six months saved up for your bills just in case if stuff goes wrong, just in case if a big sourcing opportunity comes, you have money put aside to help grow the business, but also protect you just in case if you have bad months. In previous videos, I showed you all those magazines we're listing, and they've been selling pretty well for us. First one we sold is Harhound. This is Halloween Kills. Anytime you have magazines, whoever's on the cover can really dictate the amount of money you can get or how fast it will sell. All the horror icons, Michael Myers, Leatherface, Freddy Krueger, Jason, they all bring a premium, so be on the lookout for them. Had that listed for $14.99, buyer sent me an offer for 10 bucks, I think, and we get $10 plus shipping on that. I got less than, I bought, if you guys saw what I bought, I got less than 50 cents into that magazine, so it's been pure profit. Speaking of magazine sales, we had another magazine sale, same from the same pick. And this is also a bolo, guys. If you guys come across the 007 magazines, pick them up. This is kind of what, what they look like here. But these have been selling great for us. We've already sold a couple of these. These came in that massive lot. So I have less than 50 cents into this. I had this listed for $29.99. Buyer, I think I sent the buyer an offer for $24.99. They accepted. So at $24.99 plus shipping. Next thing I wish I would have known is how much an emotional roller coaster eBay is. It's different when you have a full-time job and you do this part-time where eBay could be extra money that may pay off your student loans, put money aside for the kids to go to college, or whatever, you just use it for extra spending money. But when you're full-time, those slow months hit extra hard. And they make you panic. They make you kind of freak out. 
One thing I wish I would have did a long time ago is create a sales log, meaning write down what I do per month in a book, and that way I can reference it each year to go back. I can see what times are slow. I can compare this year to last year at the same time frame. I can also look at last year's sales to see where the slow points were, like around certain holidays, summertime, and that way I can try to prepare for that in the future. I wish someone had told me that a long time ago, instead that you just freak out when you go full time and you have a, an off month where, or you have a day where you don't sell anything. That is the most, the biggest mind F ever, let me tell you. You know, you just think there's something wrong, you think your store's broken, you think the out room's off, but really it's just, just how it is, man. Sometimes you have slow days and then Three days later, you're gonna do triple amount of sales you normally do. So it goes up and down. It is an emotional roller coaster, but I wish someone would have prepared me for that and gave me some tips and tricks along the way instead of going through the emotional roller coaster. All right, so this next sale kind of breaks my heart because this is something on my personal collection. I sold this Looney Tunes vintage shirt. Now I did pay up for it. It's the most money I've ever spent on a vintage shirt. Actually, take that back. I spent more before, but I spent $150 on this shirt and it is so cool it's, it's an original space jam shirt from 1996. here it is it's, it has the it's the all over print i'll put a picture here in the screen so you know what, what it looks like had this listed on ebay and macari someone sent me a message on macari who was interested in buying it would i know the less the least amount of money i would take which i absolutely hate that question when i do get that i don't know about you guys but i always want to respond with what's the most amount of money you're willing to spend but don't want to be a smart aleck and uh don't want to get bad custom service, so I re re I refrain from uh, <laughs> responding like that. But I ended up telling him, hey, I would take two fifty for it because I had one hundred fifty bucks into it. But I'm a car; there's no selling fees. So if I send him an offer for two fifty, then I'm getting two fifty for my item. I sent him the offer, and then when he went to cash out, he did reach out to me and say, hey, my first time buying this app, I didn't realize how many fees were on there because there's a processing fee, there's a transaction fee. When Macari removed the, the selling fees for the seller, they put it on the buyer. So I sent a message to say, sorry that, you know, that I don't have any control with the fees, but you know what? I'll drop the price to 240, give you an extra 10 bucks to try to help you out with some of those fees. And he was very thankful. He said, send over the offer. So I sent over an offer and he bought it. So I got $240 plus shipping for that shirt. So made 90 bucks. So I'm happy. And I got to wear it a couple times, but unfortunately it feels a little snug on me. So I decided to sell it. We sold another shirt. Now, if you guys are a wrestling fan from the 90s, you're going to know this NWO shirt. If you guys don't know, NWO was a group of people that decided it was a storyline where they were going to take over WCW and did like a corporate, a hostile takeover, I guess you can say. And it was the, one of the hottest storylines ever in professional wrestling. WCW ended up surpassing the WWF as the number one company in the world for a couple years there. And over time, the NWO kind of got stale, so they ended up separating two different groups. You had the white and black, and then the black and red, and this is a black and red Wolfpack shirt. And there it is, there's the NWO sign. This is an original shirt from the 90s. I actually won this on Whatnot. It didn't fit me, so I decided to put it up for sale. I paid 30 bucks for it. I ended up listing it on eBay for $49.99, and buyer bought it. So I got $49.99 plus shipping. All right, so another thing I wish I would have known is not to oversource because one of the, <laughs> we all have this problem because one of our favorite things to do is go out sourcing, buying. The treasure hunt is one of the favorite parts of this job. And that's pretty much across the board for anyone. Everyone loves to go treasure hunt. It's the work we have to put in listing, shipping, storing the items, clean items that, that kind of sucks in the, on the back end. But I wish I would have known to be better control under my, my, um, my sourcing because at one point in time, I was buying stuff, I was buying stuff, and I was starting to build up a death pile, and then I came into a massive collection, and then that just blew up my death pile. And then I sourced a little bit here, sourced a little bit there, and then bought a couple more massive collections. And before I knew it, I was in trouble. I had thousands of dollars that were that was out without getting a return on because I wasn't listing the items. And I also was taking up a lot of room, a lot of wasted space. So be careful, guys. You guys don't oversource. You know, for me, this some this is something I still have a kind of a trouble with even to this day. But you know, what kind of got me in trouble is when we were building our house. I couldn't leave my job until we closed on our house, and once we closed on our house, I was able to quit my job. So I was stockpiling and buying collections, stockpiling merchandise because I wanted to have at least six months of items to list because I wasn't sure what was going to happen after the pandemic and everything else. And 
I ended up buying a ton of stuff. I had a whole storage unit filled with merchandise. And then my house got delayed two months, three months, six months. And it got to a point, it was almost a year. We were like three weeks shy of a year. And that entire time, I was just stockpiling stuff. So that's kind of why I'm in the position I am now. Circumstances around me kind of uh, caused it to happen because I, you know, I was building a brand new house. I had a family. I got a stepson. I had pets. I had to make sure they're all covered. So I had to make sure I had enough merchandise to to take care of me for a while. But that's why I'm on Operation CSO now. Now, if you guys know the backstory, but yeah, be careful sourcing. Three more video games now. Two of the three of these video games came from that recent video game pickup. All right, Ninja Gideon 2. This didn't come from that pickup. This came from another pickup. Had this, this is for $9.99. Buyer sent me an offer for five bucks. Counted at $7.99. They accepted. So I got $7.99 plus shipping. Next time we sold is Guitar Hero War Tour. This is a very highly sought after game, guys. So if you guys do find this, this is like printing money. It will sell probably within the first couple of days of listing if you price it right. Had it listed for $11.99. Someone sent me an offer for $9.99 and we accepted. So I got $9.99 plus shipping. And the last one we sold is one of my favorite games. My Spider-Man Miles Morales is for the PS4. If you guys haven't played this, you guys are missing out. I end up selling that for $13.99 plus shipping. So this is what I like to call little bread and butter items. These little $10 to $15 games. I find them at yard sales all the time for a buck or two. Pick them up and they sell pretty fast. So that's why you always hear people ask for video games at yard sales because they have a pretty fast turnaround. And you know you can make your money back pretty quick. What I sell now is completely different than what I was previous selling. And I kind of wish I would have known that because when I went to garage sales, I was only looking for certain items and I was wasting a lot of time and effort going to garage sales and not buying anything because time is money. And I wish someone would have told me to expand my, my knowledge. I wish someone would have told me earlier to take risks. It's okay to pay for an education. It's okay to buy items or stuff that you're not really sure on. If you get it for a cheap price to take calculated risks. And it wasn't until I started doing that where my business really started to take off. For the longest time, I focused on video games or toys only, bobbleheads at one point. One time I stumbled across a Rally Roots video, Ryan and Allie, great people if you guys don't know. And uh, they were buying vintage clothing and they were going to the thrift shops and buying clothing and reselling it online and going to garage sales and finding all those vintage items. And they were getting hundreds of dollars for some of the stuff. And it just, I was in awe because I had no idea that, you know, vintage clothing could sell for so much. So I give them a lot of credit. Part of the reason why I search for vintage clothing right now because I was able to educate myself, watch a lot of other resellers. You know, when I first started, there was no YouTube. YouTube didn't start, I think, like, what, 2003 or 2006? So it wasn't really out there yet. I didn't have an opportunity to, to learn from other resellers the way that you guys have all these resource tools now. Like, like you guys are watching me here. So I wish I would have known that sooner because I would have been, I would have been able to scale up my business and I would have been able to grow a lot faster. If I would have, if I would have taken that advice, but speaking about some old vintage clothing part, and this goes in my next sale. We actually sold, this is a Disney cast member for animal kingdom opening day jean jacket. You guys can't really see it here cause it's bundled up, but actually no, this came from my private pick. I did the person who used to work at Disney. So they had a lot of Disney employee stuff. Had this listed for one thirty, And I think someone sent me an offer for 85 bucks, or 89 bucks. And I accepted. So say we got $90 plus shipping and I probably have a couple bucks into that. So really pumped about that return. Not to mention these big, thick jean jackets take up a lot of space. And on top of that, it is in the middle of the summer. So I'm happy. Anytime I sell a jacket in the middle of summer, I am super thankful and super happy because those jackets usually sit around to the fall and winter because that's the peak time to buy winter jackets. All right, we sold a couple Disney pins. Let's show you what we sold. What was this construction pin? We had this listed, I think, for $29.99 and sent an offer for $19.99 and buyer accepted. $19.95 MGM Characters Choice Award pin. Had it listed for $39.99. So buyer sent me an offer, I think, for like $25 and we accepted. So it's a total of $45 for those pins and I have maybe less than five, six bucks into them. So these have been one of the best deals I've ever gotten buying this massive collection. Not having the proper equipment is something I wish I would have learned a long time ago. Having a good camera, not having so much having a good camera. Well, actually back in the day, I wish I had a better camera because cell phones, you had a flip phones, they took the worst photos. So I was using an old digital camera in to list and I had real, all my photos used to be really dark because I didn't have the proper lighting. 
I wish I didn't use a thermal printer for a very long time. I was printing off all my labels and I was wasting so much time cutting them out. Yes, you can print on actual labels from your printer, but it wastes ink. And if you had a thermal printer, you would actually save money in the long run. So I wish I would invest in a thermal printer a long time ago. I had a regular scale and every time I put boxes on it, I couldn't see the, the front part of the scale. So I wish I would have known there was a scale that actually had a cord that stuck off to the side, which had the measurements off to the side. So the boxes, even if the box overhung on top of the scale, it wouldn't cover up what the, what the weight was. When you guys are starting reselling, make sure you have all the right tools to start off with, because if you don't, you're going to make your life so much more difficult. And uh, you learned that in the hard way. All right, next time we sold was a big one. Now, I've been sitting on this item for a long time. Less than, but less, I don't know, probably less than a year, but it's been a while. I paid 50 bucks for it, but I saw items that sold for over $400 for this. Between, I've seen them sell for four, 450, and I also seen them sell for 200. I sold some cologne. This is Bond number nine, and this is Fire Island, which is a special edition one. That's what it looks like, guys. If you guys ever come across this, this is the Bolo. I'm, so I was having, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I was having a really slow week. And normally I would probably hold off about 350, 400 for this. Buyer sent me an offer for 300 and I was like, you know what? It's been a slow week. I'm going to take it because I only have 50 bucks into it. So I got 300 bucks plus shipping for this. So I'm super pumped. This is why I always say is don't have best. If you put, do put best offers on, don't automatically decline because depending on the date of week and what's going on in your life, you might take less money than what you normally would just because you're having a bad day or a bad week. That's kind of what happened here. Man, let me tell you guys, I had a crazy weekend. It was my stepson's birthday about two months ago and I promised him, we don't like to get him gifts anymore because he pretty much has everything he needs. You know, he likes to play video games or just download him and stuff like that. But when the Jake, Jake Paul was supposed to fight Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson had to pull out of the fight so they canceled it. So they rescheduled... It was supposed to be July 20th, and Jake Paul still wanted to have the fight. It was supposed to be in Dallas, Texas. Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight was supposed to be in the Dallas Cowboys football stadium. And since the fight got postponed to November now, Jake Paul still wanted to fight. So he was going to fight Mike Perry in Tampa, Florida. So as soon as the tickets went on sale, I bought tickets for him for his birthday. So me, him, his dad, and buddy of mine all went to the fights. And let me tell you, it was an awesome night, man. If you guys have not been to a live fight before, you need to go. And going to a live fight on pay-per-view is, there's nothing that, there's no sporting event that compares to being at a live fight, like a big time live fight. And I've been to WrestleMania, I've been to the Stanley Cup, I've been to the World Series, I've been to a lot of different events. I haven't been to the Super Bowl, so I can't compare that one. That might be the only one that could be very similar, but I will tell you, the amount of celebrities that show up there, the amount of professional athletes that were there, and the atmosphere, it's like a giant party inside that arena. You know, with, they have a live DJ going on between rounds, between fights, and the atmosphere like, is electric. So, if you guys ever have the opportunity to go to a big fight time, like a big pay per view fight, highly recommend it because it was something I'll never forget. Now, one thing I wish I would have known, and this is actually a more recent one for me, is if you get a storage unit at one of those corporate facilities, after three months, six months, they're going to raise your rent like clockwork. So it is very important for people to have a place to store your items. Just be very careful. Make sure you ask the right questions when you do that. You know, when I was moving, I moved myself earlier to a storage unit closer to my new house because it's going to be about 45 minutes away. And what I didn't realize is that over time, they're going to start, re I was on auto pay and then they just started raising my rent, you know, 40 bucks, 50 bucks every like six months and over time that starts adding up so part of the reason why i'm now looking for trying to come up with a new solution with operation cso because i didn't realize that i didn't know so i would say that's a big one you know make sure you don't oversource so you don't run in this situation where you have to get external storage but if you do because your business is growing like mine was growing tremendously you know make sure you just you find the right place football season is right around the corner and i cannot wait I just ordered NC. Well, actually, I pre-ordered NCAA College Football 2025, and I can't wait to play it. I actually came on Friday, but because of the fight, because I had other stuff going on with work-wise, I had to finish. I wasn't able to play it, so I'm going to actually play it tonight for the first time, which I'm pumped. But the reason I brought that up here is because college football is in the air, NFL training camps are starting. 
these items have started to sell for me. The University of Tennessee is known for two things, the women's basketball program and men's football. A bunch of team issue clothing from a former coach of the University of Tennessee, and we started selling some now because football, <clears throat> football is back in the news, and I have a feeling I'm going to start selling a lot more of this in the future. All right, this is a player. This is actually a team-issued polo. You can tell by the actual coach's name actually put inside there. Had this listed for $49.99. Buyer sent me an offer, I think, for $30. Bucks. I accepted. At this point in time, I've got less than 3 bucks into these. I just want them to go. So I got $30 bucks plus shipping. I got another offer, another polo. This one's for University of Tennessee again. Another dry fit one, Nike dry fit. Had this one listed for $39.99. Buyers sent me an offer for $25, bucks and I accepted. So I got $25 plus shipping. I have six bucks into these, and we sold for $55 bucks total. So you cannot. That is a great turnaround. These are super easy to ship. Another thing I wish we would have known a long time ago was to make friends with your competition. Listen, there's enough food on the table for all of us to eat. Five of us can all go to the same yard sale and all find items to resell and walk away happy. And that's something I learned later on in my reselling career. You want to network with other resellers because they may sell stuff that you don't sell or vice versa. So if you get a good lead, you send it their way so they can pick stuff up and they'll return the favor due back to you. But you want to network with other resellers because if you come to bind, you want to know exactly where you can move items. You have death pile stuff you need to move. So it's very important to network with other people. And it's the only way you're going to help you grow faster by doing that. So I wish I would have done that a long time ago. I wish someone would have explained that to me. Something I learned over time, building relationships, how important it is to your business. All right, we got another Macari order. Man, it was great, man. We have sold like, like $500 of Macari this week. And actually over the weekend, which is even better. This is Knights of the Old Republic. This is number eight for Star Wars. I paid 30 bucks for a, a short box that was filled with, you know, 100 something comic books. So I have less than 50 cents into this. And end up selling this for 15 bucks plus shipping. One thing that I wish I would have known a long time ago is the impact that reselling would have on my family, negative and positive. And what I mean by that here is as my business is growing, I was trying to be very frugal with my money. And, you know, I had a garage, my garage started filling up, and my office started to fill up with stuff. I was leaving stuff in my living room, leaving stuff on my table. And my wife was not very happy with me, and rightfully so, to be honest with you. And it got to the point where the biz, the business started taking over the house. And that's the reason why I got a storage unit, because I want to keep this, them separate. Also, too, when you do work full-time for yourself, the last thing you want to do is fail and go back to working a corporate job, especially when you have a taste for it and you, and you, and you love what you do. I end up working more hours now than I ever have. I'm okay with that. I love every minute of it. My wife is okay with it, but there's times where I need to need them to have more of a life work balance because I know I'm building something. I'm working, I'm building something, building my social networks, building my YouTube channels, building my business, networking. It just never stops. And the deeper and deeper I get into this, the more opportunities arise for me and the more opportunities, which in return takes away more time from, you only have so much time in a day and I gotta learn to pick and choose what I want to do, I can't do everything. But just be, just have an understanding of how your business can affect them. Also, too, is if you're if you're on that emotional roller coaster and you're having a bad day, well, your family could feel that. So you always got to be positive, keep work, and keep your eBay business and your life separate from each other. I know it's hard to do sometimes, but you got to do. You got to you got to return. Don't take it on your family. If you have bad sales. You know, don't be depressed. Keep that separate. Just figure out ways to turn around. I'm very stubborn and I learned that one the hard way. So luckily I have a very understanding, very loving wife. You know, she just likes to yell at me a lot, rightfully so. It's because I'm usually wrong. I hate to say that, but yeah, I'm usually wrong or I'm stubborn where it may take her telling me a couple of times and then she has to yell for me to fully understand it. I'll be the first to admit. It's something I've been working on, but keep your life in your business, make sure you have a balance. It's very difficult, especially when you go full time. All right, next time we sold is actually a sports card. I'm normally not gonna show a lot of sports cards on here because I do have my third channel, Picking and Punching Cards, if you guys don't know. If you guys are into sports cards or liking people, or like watching people open up packs, go subscribe, go check it out. We just launched it less than a month ago and it's growing fast, man. We have almost 1,100 followers and we've gotten like, 80,000 views in the first month already, so which is crazy. Put things in perspective, my picking and punching channel took me a year to hit 100,000 views for the entire channel. And the fact that we're doing that within, almost doing that within weeks is insane to me, but 
Next sale I got when I was at the 100 mile sale with Kevin, Kamal Picker. This is a Michael Jordan die cut card from 2021. Metal University champ. I love this card. I actually bought it. It was in my PC. I was going to keep it. The guy was hooking me up with some great deals up there. So I ended up paying his asking price. Paid 100 bucks for this. You know, when you are making deals with people, sometimes you got to pay what they're asking for. Sometimes you can negotiate. But paid 100 bucks for this. I figured I listed high. If it didn't sell, I didn't care because I'll keep this in my PC. And I had this on Macari for $169.99. Buyer sent me an offer for 144 bucks. On Macari, there's no selling fees, so it's a $44 profit, so I took it. So I got $144 plus shipping on this. We sold a Louis Vuitton box. As these empty boxes, you've seen me sell these before. This is a magnetic box. If you guys haven't seen, this is all. This is the massive card collection that I've been building for the channel. So you guys want to see me open this stuff up, go check out Picking and Punching Cards. Had this box listed for $34.99. Sent the buyer an offer for $25 bucks and they accepted, so I got $25 plus shipping. I got less than 5 bucks in this box. It's very important to make sure that you guys do have, you know, you guys hear people say this all the time that you guys want to be listing every day. It's very important. You got to be listing every single day. And if you're not listing, create a draft bank so that you, those days that you run out of time and those days that you can't list, you have items already ready to be listed for you so that you can be consistent, keep listing. I will tell you things will come up every single day between your family, your pets, your business, the weather, you're always gonna find things to distract you. You have to be, you have to have a system in place. You have to make sure that you can prepare and be ready for those because I wasn't for a long time in certain things and it really hurt my business. So now I'm a lot more prepared. You know, doing this channel helps keep me in check because I can't tell you guys how to be successful if I'm not successful myself. So I actually use this channel as a check and balance for myself. Make sure you guys do that, you know, it's very important. And the last, but the most important thing of everything, make sure you resell for the right reasons and you do this because you love what you do. You have goals in mind for you and your family and you guys are making money because nothing's worse than putting all this time and effort in and not making any money with this. You know, I'm able to pay my bills, support my family, be able to go on trips, have fun. And I absolutely love what I do. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video here. I do appreciate each and every one of you guys as always, please make sure you guys do like and subscribe. We're, we're approaching 3,000 subs to this channel, which is crazy to me. If you guys want to hear me walk around my house and just talk about what I sell. So I thank you. I want to say thank you once again for all, each and every one of you. And until next time, guys, make sure you guys keep flipping and punching.